Well, if you're just joining us, this is Life Bites Live. I'm Nina Bosky, and a few months ago, the Dr. Phil show touched my heart when, I'm, when one of my favorite actors and his family were generous enough to go on and share their personal experience with this very big challenge of addiction. So, like so many of us, I had been touched with this disease, and with having a loved one, I wanted to see more of their story. So I am very honored to welcome the Roberts family, Eric, who is joining us on his new movie set of Unbreakable Sword. It takes place in 1914. It's about a British officer and his missionary niece who take this trek across the eastern African terrain and are pursued by the enemies that want to stop them. So we'll see what that's all about. And Eliza and his stepson, Keaton Simons, a talented musician. Wow, this is a mouthful. Welcome to Life Bites Live. Hello. <laughs> How are yes. You? Well, amazing. wow, it's a talented family. We got a lot to say. Yeah. So, you know, uh, I, as I said, I had a chance to visit Eric on his movie set yesterday, and I got a chance to ask him what his role was about. Let's see what he had to say. Well, Nina, first of all, thank you for having the interview on set of the uh, Unbreakable Sword. I play a colonel in the King's Army, 1914. I play Colonel Locke Smith, Locke Wood, in, uh, in the King's Army, 1914. Well, I asked Eric for people who did not see the Dr. Phil show or the celebrity rehab with Dr. Drew, how long had he been sober and how has his journey personally been since then? See, let's see, Celebrity Rehab was almost three years ago now. And uh, the, uh, the first year was a breeze, nothing to it, I got through it. Second year, um, I celebrated on my anniversary, which was a bad move, had to go to a meeting right away. The, uh, the third year, it's, uh, it's really getting difficult. I'll be honest with you, it's a struggle. Um, I have not, uh, I've not seen or done a prescription new medication since 1994, but pot being legal now, especially in LA, and quite frankly, everybody smokes it. So it is, it is a struggle, but I'm doing well, thank you. So let's talk about this because yeah. his experience in terms of being sober as well has not, uh, you know, is, it's a challenge. And I think this is a really real aspect for all of us because we think sometimes when somebody gets sober, it just instantly changes and everything is gonna be great. Right. Let's start with you, Eliza. What's your experience been? Well, first of all, Celebrity Rehab wasn't three years ago. Right. Oh. And, and Eric also <laughs> said, I don't know if we're going to see it on the, on the show, but um, how, you know, pot is not good for the memory. <laughs> and, you know, he couldn't remember the name of his character and he couldn't remember <laughs> the name of the movie. Right. How long ago the show was. And, um, you know, generally in terms of, I, I think it's, they, they have that term dry drunk. Uh -huh. often what you end up with is all the problems you started using for and the family can really be wishing that the user would go back to using uh, so it is that, not that, an instant fix that's actually a really good point Absolutely. because I think for a while when my ex was not drinking um, it took a while because his anger issues came up exactly yeah. it's it's uh, the main reason why people turn to drugs and alcohol and various addictive obsessive compulsive behaviors is to you know, either self-medicate or to somehow deal with or remedy deeper issues, core issues that are going on. And so, you know, usually when, when people get rid of the behavior, all that's left is the toxic stuff oh, inside. Yeah. So, you know, Keaton, you were estranged from Eric yeah. for a few years. I mean, more than a few years. More than a few. <laughs> more than a few years. Yeah. What did it take for you to mend it? Um, honestly, it took my learning how to um, how to love myself and how to lead with uh, with love you oh know? wow uh, that's that's kind of been more than anything and for me the, the the biggest lesson that I learned through all of it is just how incredibly futile it is to hang on to anger and hostility and resentment it just does nothing but toxify the self that's it. You well, know? you know, you, you make a good point, and we're going to get into this a little bit later because he talks about you a lot, and I find it very amazing how it can be so toxic, and I also, ha I saw it on the Dr. Phil show, yeah. I saw it in the interview with him, the beauty of the journey of mending a relationship like this, and I, I, I want to give people hope out there Definitely. that they can 
they can get to the other side. Absolutely. Well, you can. It's just about making that decision for yourself uh, and not being afraid. I mean, it's it's so easy to build up uh, this this kind of I don't know. It almost becomes it becomes habitual. It becomes an addiction in and of itself to hang on to that. Oh, I need to teach somebody a lesson, or I, I you know, resting on these ideas of uh, principle or whatever it is. It's it, it's all useless you know it's all a waste of time i think you make a really wonderful point because i know with my ex for years yeah. i was like oh you know i was angry and now it's like you know you start to accept and you move on forgiveness as they say is not about uh, the other person it's about yourself all. it sets you free so yesterday i also got a chance to ask eric what advice would he give to somebody who is battling with their addiction this is what he had to say well, it all depends on the individual. You can you can give blanket advice about anything, like uh, like like if the shoe fits, wear it, you know. But uh, everybody's different, and everybody. What's what's the most important thing about addiction is to understand when you stop the addiction, you haven't stopped what causes the addiction. So you have to understand that about yourself that you're not well because you're not using. You you had a problem which uh, which uh, forced you to start using. Or you, or you try to self-medicate to, uh, to cure your difficulties. But uh, so, uh, so when you stop, you still have the same difficulties. So to, to, to stop being an addict is not necessarily to stop your difficulties or your problems. It's just to stop being an addict. But, uh, or to stop being a practicing addict. You will always be an addict person, just like me. But um, so, so, so to stop using is not the answer. To know, to know, to know why you started using can be the answer. Wow, that's that's powerful. What would you say is the most challenging aspect of dealing with this? How about you, Keaton? For me, mm -hmm. of uh, dealing with what addiction in yeah, general? Yeah, addiction or? in general. Um, the the hardest thing about dealing with addiction in general is that it it seems to me to be an offshoot of a very uh, natural human instincts you know it's kind of um it's i think of it as an exacerbation of things that are in otherwise healthy normal survival drives and those kinds of things um that's what becomes once it once it gets toxic and and kind of you know i, I a lot of times i describe i'll say like you know we all have pores all over our bodies right but one of them gets infected it can kill you mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh but it that doesn't mean that the poor there's something wrong with the poor and so the difficult thing with addiction especially certain addictions um uh, food addiction, uh, you know, uh, all mm -hmm. kinds of things, anorexia mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. It's so difficult because you're dealing with things that are actual basic human necessities. And, uh, but it, it all ends up kind of boiling down to that. Wow. Yeah, that's... Don't you that's, think? I yeah, mean, no, I, I definitely think that, I mean, because moderation, yes. key to life. You know, if Absolutely. you start going to the extreme, it becomes a difficulty. I got a chance to also ask Eric what he thought was the most challenging thing. Oh, Let's see really? what he has to say. Uh, to get comfortable with myself, because, you know, for me, um, my, my addiction, you know, came from uh, pathological anxiety. I have anxiety over stuff like, um, like, like the neatness of my underwear drawer. I mean, I'm, I'm a bit silly. And it's and so, but whenever ever ever I would smoke pot, all my anxiety went away. The only problem is, it makes you a little dumb. And uh, as an actor, I have to have all my short-term memory about me. And as I get older, it's harder. So I uh, I, I I recommend if you have to remember things, you don't smoke marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> good answer, good answer. Really now I've got a question for you. Being I was an enabler and you're kind of that person in Eric's life, mm -hmm. were you rearranging his, his underwear drawer? Like oh, trying to yeah. help him? I kept thinking, <laughs> not realizing that that, that problem was going to float wherever it was going to go. Yeah. It was just going to be there, the anxiety. So you could keep on trying to clean up this mess or fix this or make sure the routine was intact. But the anxiety is going to be there. It'll find some place to live. It has nothing to do with what you think it has to do with. Absolutely. You know, what's kind of fun is that you have a very big blossoming career. So we're going to give a listen to one of his songs. Uh, so, you know, let's take a look at a clip that I grabbed, yeah, but it actually happens to be one of your best songs as I'm hearing. I think it's Beautiful Pain. Let's, let's, uh. let's take a look. Why's it gotta be so hard? Why's it gotta be this way? 
It's like I'm being torn apart by all this beautiful pain. And I know you wanna be with me, but you gotta go to him. Freedom isn't really free. You sink before you learn to swim. I love that line. Thank That's a you. great line, you know? <laughs> you. We all got to learn how to swim. Keaton Simons, Can You Hear Me? We'll, we'll be promoting it also uh, at the end of the show, too. But, you know, I was talking to Eric, and you could tell he thinks the world of you. Thank you. And I asked him if he could describe the two of you in three words. What would he say about you and your mom? This is what he had to say. Let's take a look. Eliza, it would be kindness, patience, and intelligence. And with Keaton, it would be it would be brilliance, brilliance, and brilliance. I love That's love, really love, sweet. love. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got you with that one. I know. Well, you got me more with the sad things, though. Mascara. That's why I don't wear mascara. <laughs> well, you know, what I love, too, is seeing, like I said, that transition. Because at, at one point, that wasn't the case. So no. <laughs> how would you describe him? Let's start with you, Eliza. How would you describe him in three words? Okay, well, first of all, he always felt that way about Keaton. That, that estrangement was one-sided and understandable, <laughs> very legitimate, but, yeah. you know. Um, Ke Eric's always aspired to be more like Keaton, actually. But, okay, now, describing Eric in three words. <laughs> I've written a lot of words about this guy. I, know. Um, I would say fussy. <laughs> um, Brilliant and his own worst enemy. Is that one word? Sure, that's a phrase. That's a, that's a phrase word. <laughs> that's, a, that's an interesting And how phrase. about you, Keaton? Um, I, I would probably say loving, um, curious, and smart. I love, I love sometimes summing it up a little bit. Yeah. Uh, people are yeah. much more than those three words, of course. but it, yeah. it's it's nice. Sometimes you can you can almost feel what mm. they're about, their essence of what they're about. Mm. And you know, obviously, you guys have got a lot of talent in this family, Keaton, with your career and a lot of uh, good music here. And this, you also have a t uh, song on iTunes too, right? I do. I've got a lot, got a lot yeah. of stuff on iTunes, yeah. but a, a pretty new one. I uh, had a really cool placement on the show, Private Practice, and released. Uh, the single that was that was featured oh. on that show and that was I it's called if I hadn't forgotten if I hadn't forgotten yeah. yeah and so if I hadn't forgotten we had talked to Eric about his big talent and obviously three Golden Globe uh, nominations one Academy Award nomination I think when I saw Dr. Phil I said this is just the beginning so let's see what he had to say and what he's most proud of in his career it's about a seven or an eight way tie. What I'm most proud of in my career as far as work goes is my first film, King of the Gypsies, what I consider my best movie called Star 80. And uh, then, then of course, Pope of Greenwich Village with me and Mickey Rourke, Runaway Train with me and John Voight, Love is a Gun with me and my wife and Kelly Preston, It's My Party, which is a true story written by Randall Kleiser about Randall Kleiser and his lover. And uh, did I say Purgatory? Purgatory with me and Sam Shepard. I love that one. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I also asked him what he had coming up, too. And I, there's a lot of stuff for this man. Uh, he's, like I said, you know, he's got a vast career already, and he's got a lot more to come. What I have coming up is a really good movie called The Novelist. It's about a drunk, only it's not your, you know, you know, you know typical drunk and drunk gets well kind of movie. It's about a guy you, uh, you start with him on the bottom. And you watch him crawl up to the top. In fact, uh, I was in Germany. I was in, I was in, I was in Berlin, and I was in Hamburg. At the same time as my stepson, who was on tour, Keaton Simons, go to my website, robertsactor.com. There's a link to him, and you can hear his music, Keaton Simons. He was there, and uh, Ke Keaton and I are very close. So uh, it was, it was, it was, it was fun to be in a foreign country at the same time. 
You know, I think that, see, that was a very true es testament to the fact of how he, he really does believe in your talent. And one of the things I thought was kind of interesting, too, is that I think when you revisit your past and you look at the wisdom, because there's wisdom in the past and mm -hmm. as you grow as a person. So I asked him the question, if what is it that he knows now that he wishes he knew then? And this is what he had to say. <clears throat> there is so much that I know now that I didn't know then that I almost wish I didn't know now what I didn't know then. But um, as you get older and you realize that, um, that, uh, that life is a good thing, it doesn't have to be always so trying. And you, you, you can incorporate your own comfort in your life by uh, finding things that, uh, that make you comfortable and then stay close to them. If it's a book, if it's a charm, if it's a car, if it's a room, whatever it is, if it's a book, always have it close by, always have it. And, and if, it's, if it's a place, have a picture. This all sounds very oversimplistic, but it's also true, it will help. You know, one of the things, too, is I love to do is I ask people at the end of the show, I ask them to do a Life Bites inspirational. But since he's not here with us live, I'll have you guys do it after the show. I asked him to do his own Life Bites inspirational. This is what he had to say. Hi, my name is Eric Roberts, and I would like to say hi to my wife and my stepson, Keaton Simons, who are in the studio. Hi, guys. You're a lot cooler than I am. I know it. I'm sweating like a pig out here. Uh, my life bite. My life bite is from one of my three favorite songs, you know, by you, Keaton, called Beautiful Pain. And my life bite is this. If you're going to save a life, maybe it should be your own. Then you can help other people. Peace out. Those are some words of wisdom, you know? You think about that, really, because that's why I also wanted to have you two on the show, because you guys can provide a lot of wisdom to families out there and loved ones that are dealing with this. So, <laughs> now you're making me cry. I'm like, wow, well, boo boo. I'm like, I'm matching you. Oh my gosh. So, you know. <laughs> Now we're having a cry Sandra fest on that. <laughs> I'm looking, I know, now dude, Julia's crying. So one of the things I wanted to do to end with, because I asked Eric this question, is what advice from each of you, from your perspective, would you give to the viewer that is watching? Like a life bite kind of advice? Yeah, just whatever you'd like to. You want to go first? No, hell no. <laughs> you go first. I got to think about this. Uh, <laughs> of course, I'll allow you since you're my child. Um, I think people need to realize that all the stuff that we feel is so bad about us and that nobody else is this bad and oh my God, if somebody knew this secret about me, oh my God, please know that is just being a human being. That's just being a living organism on this planet. And I think the reason we scandalize things is because we want to keep on pretending that that's not part of us, but embrace yourself. That has to come first, even if it's about something you want to change. Embrace it as part of you, recognize it, be tender about it, and then you can work on it in an effective way. But it's all the attacks that we do on ourselves that cause us to attack others, and you end up with the world as it is right now. Um, so that would be, that's not really a nutshell, but that would be my advice. Also, an ounce of prevention. There is, um, mm -hmm. Keaton is the, uh, the voice of an audio book called The Natural Child, naturalchild.org. Kind of everything is there. Um, if we start our kids off the way that is the philosophy of this book, I think we'd have a lot less of, well, we wouldn't have this show and that would be too bad, but we'd have a lot mm -hmm. less of what we're talking about today. Yeah. So there we go. And you, Keaton. I, I would say um, stay curious. The, the only way to guarantee that you're not going to learn something is to think you already know the answer to it. Um, and, you know, that means to open up and re-examine conventions that, that uh, 
people take for granted. You know, I think there's a like like we were saying before about trust. I think there's a there's a common un, uh, accepted definition of trust that doesn't really make a lot of sense to me because it, nobody, if you ask anybody, you go, do you have trust issues? Everybody has trust issues. Of course they do, because people trust isn't what you think it is. Um, and it's the same thing with uh, with love. I always, you know, people say do unto others, and I do agree with that. But I think that uh, I, I think it's more effective to kind of do unto yourself. You teach other people how to love you by the way you love yourself. And just as as Eric said, and that line that he quoted was was my line. And thank you so much for that. That's exactly what I meant by it. If you're going to save a life, maybe it should be your own. The the only way that a a person is capable of being there to support someone else is if they are strong and uh, supported internally. Wow. So thank you both you're for welcome. a powerful and profound show. And I hope for everybody out there that you uh, have gotten something out of today's show because you've given us a lot of words of wisdom. So thank you so much. Thank you. Welcome. Yes, thank, thank you. you Nina. Mm. Well, yes, thank <laughs> you. you. Thank you. So if you'd like to know more about this family and dealing with addiction, but just finding out more about these two talented artists, you can go to ericrobertsactor.com and Keaton Simons to find out more. Wonderful CD, iTunes. I was listening to his music all before the show. Check it out. His new song, If I Hadn't Forgotten. So anyway, I'd like to say thank you to all my guests, Dr. Reef, again, Eric, Eliza, and of course, Keaton Simons, and my chat girl, Julia Price, as well as everyone here on the Life Bites team and EmpowerMe.tv.